let the real deal now. Woo! Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> Say what you got. You used to think you own the street. We'll pack your bags and your ass is dead meat. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number six of the Lowdown Show. Not just the Lowdown Show on the Holds Barred a Wrestling Podcast. Think about our old podcast. Uh, we are your Canadian-based RV podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news related to the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, or on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. After we're done recording the podcast, it is posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR, or on iTunes and Stitcher Radio by searching up The Lowdown Show. So go check us out, wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, at NoHolesBardWP, and join in on the conversation, having your thoughts and questions read right here on the show. We are also available to follow on Facebook and Instagram by searching no Holds Barred WP. All links will be in the video on YouTube in the description below. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Every week, I am continuing to be joined by my corporate co She is the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Out of my new Sasha Banks 7-Eleven cup. Yeah, and I got my Undertaker one. Uh, I don't know if it's, a, it's the same thing in the States, but we got these uh, exclusive 7-Eleven Slurpee cups, and they got a, a WWE Superstar or Superstars on them. And uh, they're available at 7-Eleven. I don't know if they're available in the States, but they are up here in Canada. I got my boy, The Undertaker. He's got Sasha Banks. I ended up buying almost all the cups. I didn't want the Ultimate Warrior one. If it's still there, I'll eventually buy it. But uh, I got Stone Cold, Sasha Banks, Undertaker, Enzo and Cast. New Day. And New Day. Interesting people they picked for the 7-Eleven cups there. <laughs> Notice the only woman they chose. Sasha Banks. There yep. must be a reason. Yep. Uh, Mason Dunbar in chat says, hello. Hello, Mason Dunbar. Hello. Um, so, yeah. Some Slurpees. Yeah. 7 Eleven promotion right there. That's 7 Eleven. Limited time. <laughs> yeah, 7 Eleven, you should be sponsoring us now. We just yeah, plug no, you guys. Just plugged. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Lowdown Show. Um, uh, we actually debated on almost doing this today. We didn't like, know if we were going to do it. Well, I was thinking about doing it offline since, you know, Raw was taped this week. Yeah. Um, so we, we, we were going to. We got threatened by Juggy. I'm doing this for Juggy. We're doing it live just for you, Juggy Brown. Our one Twitter fan of the month. I think he won it for, won it for the month of April. Or March. March. Good for him. But we're doing it live just for you, Juggy, if you're listening. Just for you. Um, the reason why we almost didn't do it. Uh, Raw in SmackDown. A lot of people out there liked it. We hated it. It was like they could do they could have done such a better job. But they didn't. And for a crowd like the UK's crowd, that's horrible. Tape WWE is garbage. It is. It is bad. Anytime they go to UK, they always get shafted with a bad show. It sucks because they're such a good crowd. And then they basically tone out the crowd because they input their own fake fake boos or fake cheers. So we don't yeah. even actually know what they're cheering That's for. That's one thing. I wonder, my God, man. Inputting the fake crowd noise that really wasn't need to be done. Especially a crowd like the UK. You know they're going to be loud. You don't have to input fake crowd noise for them to not be loud. Especially the boos. The boos piss me off, man. Why can't you? Why can't you let them boo and cheer whoever they want? You do that for every other city in the states, but then when you go to the UK, you shaft them because it's pre-recorded. Done for sure. Muted the Roman Reigns boos. Oh my God, they are heavily muted. There was boos, but there's you can tell half of it was uh, from reports that I've read. It was deafening in there. So, and it's a big arena. Like the O2 arena is huge. It held like they were sold out both nights. Seventeen thousand strong, man. In uh, an arena uh, full of 17,000 people who cheer or boo in this case all loud. It's going to get a more of a reaction than what we heard. It sounded like they were in a bingo hall, what we heard. It sounded like Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But the, the streak of there to be producing crappy shows for the UK fans who are unreal fans and such an unreal fan base, it continues. Again, it's like a shame. I, it is a shame, man. I, they, they, they make up the WrestleMania crowd. They make up the WrestleMania, the Raw after WrestleMania crowd. That WWE loves the hype every single year, especially the last couple of years. 
but then they shaft them when they get Raw and SmackDown boy, on other days. Our boys RTM always get shafted over there. Yeah, man. It's a shame, <laughs> too. It's a shame. It's probably why they go to ICW all the time. Probably. I don't blame them. I noticed something this week, and it really uh, grinded my gears a little bit. I'm not sure. It was just, I, I felt weird. Um, it sounds like Tom Phillips is trying to sound a lot like Mauro Ronaldo. And I, I'm getting a lot of Ronaldo vibes every time he talks. And the way he uh, presents himself and the way he... he uh, freaks out at certain moves in the ring or at certain situations. But he, he never used to be like that. No, he didn't. So that's why I'm we- I'm getting weirded out. I'm like, is this like is this a jab at him or is this like Ronaldo maybe maybe Tom Phillips actually loved Ronaldo and this is his way of getting back at maybe, I don't know, JBL or something. I don't know what's going on here. But it sounded he sounded more and more like Ronaldo and it was just weirding me out. Maybe, maybe he's gotta they, stop. He's gotta be his own thing. Maybe they want they knew that he was sounding too much like Michael Cole, so they wanted him to sound different. <laughs> No, oh, Juggy Brown, bout damn time, no holds barred botchers. How about you, Juggy Brown? It's, uh, what? We're six minutes in, now you're responding? Huh, Juggy Brown? Hmm? You know I what happens? Know you called the shots around here. Yeah, you know what happens, Juggy Brown? When you show up late to the podcast, six minutes in, huh? Wanna know what happens? Cobra Cat, wanna do, wanna do the honors? You know what? You know what? Yeah, you know what? We got, we got yeah, something better. Exactly. We, got, we got something better. You know what, Juggy Brown? You know what? You just made the list. That's right. You got one of those. <laughs> You're on the list. You're on the week. list. <laughs> Since we're not doing the list of ten this week. Yeah, we'll give you one of those. <laughs> you want Mason Dubber here? You get one of these. Ten. You get a ten for <laughs> not being too corporate. <laughs> I don't know about your tweets, but we'll get into that later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a shame. Like we were just saying, UK crowd gets shafted. Uh, Juggy Brown, you're late over an hour. Hour late? We said three o'clock. Three o'clock Eastern, Eastern time. time, Juggy Brown. Eastern time. It's probably four where you are, but it's three o'clock where we are. No, it's, it's probably two where he is. Or two? Where he is. That's still an hour. That's an hour. I said three p.m. Eastern time on the on Twitter. Juggy Brown, get your times right, man. Juggy Brown, you're benched for today. Yeah, you're benched. <laughs> you just made the list. You made the list again. <laughs> you did it again. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I know I usually start off the show with the tweets, but I'm gonna get them to it after. I'm gonna do the review quick, guys. The review this week's gonna be very quick. How are we doing the show this week? Literally, I have two pages for each show. That's how quick I'm going to be doing the review. It's literally going to take us 20 minutes to do both shows because it was bad. There was nothing worth talking about. We'll quickly go over both shows, and then we'll just talk wrestling. There's a lot of news that's been coming out in the last couple of days. We'll talk some wrestling. Maybe I'll take some Skype calls. Whoever's listening and wants to call in, let us know in the chat, and then maybe we'll talk some wrestling. But whatever. Um, The show is going to be a really quick review because if WB wants to give us – Bad crappy product. crappy products, we're gonna review it crappily. We're gonna give a twenty minute review on both shows. So uh let's just get into it. So we'll start off with Raw, live from the O2 Arena, London, England. It wasn't live. Wasn't uh, sorry, recorded <laughs> from the O2 arena. It was live at the time, but it wasn't recorded live. You know what I mean. Anyways, opening segment. It started with Dean Ambrose in ring segment. Basically, Miz and Ambrose are the GMs for the night. A lot of people liked that on Twitter, a lot of people didn't. I'm on the fence. I really don't give a shit. Uh, Strowman comes out in a sling. Then Kalisto came out and wants Strowman. Ambrose then books Strowman and Kalisto for later. Great. And like we wanted Strowman and Kalisto to go at it again. And Ambrose book, books Miz versus Balor to open the show up. Sure. So Miz faced Balor. Balor ends up winning uh, after the match. Or, okay, Balor ends up winning. Because before, Miz actually won by DQing Balor for touching the referee. But then Ambrose came out and restarted the match and banned Maurice from ringside. And that's how Balor won basically like less than a minute after that. Great. It was a great opening contest. Typical GM, like, what is yeah. it, interim GM getting involved? Spot. Yeah. yeah. Um, we move on. We got Alexa Bliss with Nia Jax. And Mickey James with Bailey, but there's moments before this backstage. We had the segment with Nia and Alexa Bliss. We were now, I guess, best friends or frenemies. Because uh, yeah. basically, Nia Jack says she wants the title after Bailey. Yeah. So Alexa, you know, just try not to get her ass kicked. So she's, she's, she's being smart. It's brilliant on her part. Yeah. Getting Nia on her side. It's brilliant. <laughs> and she gives a little smirk after Nia Jack left the room. Whatever. It's great. So Bliss ends up winning this match with her new uh, DDT finisher that uh, snap implant DDT. or snap DDT, whatever it is. Uh, Bliss and Bailey brawl after the match, and Nia Jax just basically kills Nia, uh, Mickey James. She got squashed in the corner there. And that was bad it for Mickey. I-, I think she should be doing a lot better. Than and she just gets literally run over 
My Nia Jax. Not even that. Like, she's not even getting really that good of a reaction like I expected her to get either. Yeah. Shame. Yeah, exactly. Jackie Brown, hashtag yawn, is right. This show was yawn. Um, we had a backstage promo. There's one good thing Raw did this week. It was really well done. It was uh, Joe's backstage promo. It was very, very intense by Joe. I think he's better at promoting backstage when he's more aggressive and angry. It seems like... Uh, if he's not angry and he's just, you know, in a normal state of mind, he's not really, he's kind of almost monotone at promoting, but it almost seems like when he gets more aggressive and he's uh, more intense, his promos are actually better. And if that's the case, I'm liking the direction they take with Smojo if they continue it that way. Um, basically just cut a promo on Seth Rollins. We moved on with Kalisto versus Strowman garbage match. Fucking terrible. Roman ends up coming out. Juggies boy. Still all bandaged up. And Strowman's and, uh, all bandaged up. Yeah, him and Strowman brawl. Strowman actually has a legitimate elbow injury. He's going to be out for some time. Uh, so they were playing off that. Yeah, yeah, Roman that, kicked the crap yeah, out of him. He's, got, he's having surgery on his elbow. And he's, they're actually the great balls of fire. And we'll get into the news part. Is is up in the air right now for the Universal title. Uh, Strowman ends up running away from Reigns. Way to make Ro- Braun Strowman look str- uh, weak once again. With his hurt shoulder. With his hurt shoulder. Great. If anyone cares, Braun Strowman won the match by DQ because Roman won. Or Roman kicked, you know, Roman beat, or DQ'd Strowman, sure. Or Kalisto, I guess. In this case, it's like Kalisto getting DQ'd. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> again, it just did nothing for me. It was They made Braun Awful. Strowman look like shit, so I don't care. I know it's your boy, Juggy Brown, him coming back and looking strong. Like he, you know, you probably want him to, but for me, it did absolutely nothing. It's bad. I don't care that Roman Reigns is looking strong as, as strong, but the way they did it was terrible. They could have done so much better. Again, it was lazy. It felt like I, I tweeted out, it's lazy. This week feels very lazy. Like, WWE just didn't give a fuck about what they were putting out there. It felt like a live event booking. Yeah. It, I was, we're watching a stream live event. Both shows. Terrible. You had a tag team turmoil. Shazaro, the club, Enzo and Cass, Golden Truth, and Rhino and Slater. Uh, Cesaro and Sheamus were like the, the team that were standing there for the entire turmoil. It was like teams going up against them. And uh, Jackie Brown agrees with us. Thanks. Cesaro and Sheamus uh, lasted every team to win the match and became number one contenders, but actually faced Golden Truth in the last of the turmoil. Yeah. Cool. I thought they, they had the backstage promo with them too. Yeah. And oh Arch- my God. And Goldust was trying to pump our truth up and saying, like, you know. We could still do this. We, you know, we still have it left in the tank. And... <laughs> sort of. <laughs> that had to be the last team because Golden, because Sh- Goldust couldn't last that entire turmoil. No way he would have lasted. <laughs> but they don't end up winning. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> they're getting beat down after, and the Hardys came out for the save. Yeah. And Shazaro gets the heel win. Yeah, and they get another title opportunity. Like, why? Why don't they go for a different team? Why do we get rinse and repeat shit again? Oh, again, we're going to get another feud with these because two. Because now they're heels, so it's a different match. Oh, okay, yeah, we got to do that. Yeah, let's get on it. No, we're moving on. I get, it's, it's so hard to review shit that doesn't do nothing for me. I literally feel like JD right now, who's literally like almost taking a... He should be taking a week off. He wants to take a week off from this crap. Because right now, it, it, it's, it's terrible product right now. I don't know why people agree with it. People are saying... I've read few opinions on Twitter... Thing that they liked this week, and I'm like, what did you like this week? I really want to know. Give me an, an honest sheet here, a point form sheet of what did you like, Tell and I bet you I take anything. a black permanent marker and I cross out everything you just said. It's just stale. Like, like it's, it's still the WrestleMania hangover right now, and it's just bad. Yeah. And there's no excuse for them to give us bad product just because it's a tape show. Yeah. Um, Seth Rollins and Smojo face each other after this, and it was probably one of the best things of Raw, one of the only good things of Raw. Um, it was actually a good match. I enjoyed it. The ending makes sense. A lot of people were questioning the ending. Uh, tr- uh, Smojo ripped the turnbuckle pad off and smashed Rollins' face off it to get DQ'd. People were like, oh, why is such a good match in a DQ? I'm like, you, 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 we're not going to have good matches end with a good ending on Raw's every goddamn week. This makes sense to intensify their feud of Smojo not winning properly, not winning cleanly, and making Seth Rollins... Like, Seth Rollins is going to come back next week. He's going to be more pissed off at Joe, and they're going to intensify their feud. This, the way they did it made sense. In my opinion, it made sense because after that, he smashed his head off it again and locked in the Coquina Clutch to look strong. So it looks like Rollins and Joe are going at it even more. And I don't mind that feud because those two can actually put on a good match. So uh, Can we just bring up how much Joe sweat 
<laughs> oh yeah, we 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 pointed at, or we we saw that when we were watching it. Joe was like sweating buckets. I remember sending a tweet out for that. Dude looked like he was dumping a bucket of water over his head. It was bad. It, yeah, he needs to get that towel. Yeah, just keep it around his neck. <laughs> Mason, you think you're used to bad wrestling? That's why you liked it, man. Mason, you you'll eventually get it, man. You'll eventually see the light of uh, what's good, what's a good product, and what's a bad product out there, and. I'm telling you right now, Mason, this week was a bad product. We, me and Clappy have been watching wrestling too much to know what is good and what is bad, and this week was lazy. Trust me, it was completely lazy. I mean, they could have done a better job this week. I mean, everybody has what they like in, in wrestling, and some people do like this crap. I don't. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Jones joins in the chat. How are you doing, Tyler Jones? Oh, I've only man. been watching wrestling for like two years, and I can tell the difference, and these two years are shit. Yep. Well, Tyler Jones, I hopefully it gets better for you as a new wrestling fan. I'm sure it will. Just give it time. Give it time. It, wrestling is like literally the stock market. It got, it's got it up and it goes up and down all the fucking Throughout time. Throughout the year. Yeah, there's never a straight line. If it would, then they <laughs> wouldn't. They, they'd give us everything away every week. Chuggy Brown. Watch Ring of Honor. That's a good product. <laughs> Tyler Jones' impact, not bad either. Come on, Tyler Jones. <laughs> Stop it, man. Impact. Impact. Hashtag fuck that owl. Uh, anyways, uh, TJP faced uh, Jack Gallagher. Not sure, TJ Perkins. Repackaged as TJP JP. now that he's heel. Look out. Yeah. Careful, he's got the same entrance music, but uh, he's he wears darker clothing. Dark pants. Dark pants. Yeah. And, uh, okay, I'll give it to them. Ring of Honor is actually pretty good. It, it's good. It's just not, it doesn't have the production value, I guess, and it doesn't have the talent that WWE has. It sucks. They'd be, imagine if Ring of Honor had the money... The the talent to to compete with WWE, they actually be an actual good competition for WWE, but they don't. They wrestle so in it sucks. school gyms. Yeah. Whatever, but it's still good to see indie wrestling. There's a lot you can take from ind- independent wrestling with WWE puts out there. Um, so into the TJP Jack Gallagher match. Uh, it was an all right match. Neville was on commentary in his full ring gear for whatever reason. Guy didn't have any physical physical, any presence in this whole match. Didn't attack anyone, didn't do anything, but he was in his full ring gear. Did he have a match on Superstar? No! What the hell was he in his full ring gear for? Usually they come out in their, their street clothes. <laughs> or a suit or something. Uh, come okay, on, Ty Jones, obvious joke on impact. <laughs> come on, you're supposed to be the king of the cruiserweights. you got to come yeah, out. King of the cruiserweights. You know? you got to come out in a suit and a crown. So I can say, hey, I like my boy TJ Perkins over there. Oh He'll be a Lord. great young Prince or something, whatever. Anyway, I'm getting off topic here. <laughs> DJP wins with a roll up by holding the tights, and then after the match, he locks in a knee bar, and Aries comes out for the save. And I didn't watch 205 Live, but I guarantee you it led to Jack Gallagher and Aries versus TJP. Gallagher Neville. and 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 Aries had a pint together in the ring. Mm. A pint, neat. A neat I was expecting pint. Gallagher to get a bigger pop than he did. Yeah, you know what? Actually, okay, no, no, I saw that entrance because I actually wanted to see if he would get a pop, and he didn't really. I wonder if they were muted. Wouldn't, Wouldn't be, be surprised. Don't hit that mute button. <laughs> okay, we gotta make uh, 205 Live look bad. Vince hates 205 Live. Gotta make it look Gallagher bad. can't get more cheers than Roman. No way. <laughs> um, Sasha Banks faced Alicia Fox for whatever reason. Completely random. I don't know what the fuck happened. Uh, Sasha Banks won. But they showed multiple angles of Alicia Fox's shoulder up. I don't know if that's going to tie into them, like if they're going to keep feuding and they're going to tie that into it or not. But Alicia Fox still shows up on 205. I don't know what the hell's going on with her character. But There was something going on in the crowd during this match. The crowd was, like, looking back. Yeah. Well, because, like, I don't blame them for not paying attention. What did this match have to do with anything? I don't know what they're doing with Sasha, man. It's killing me right now. I don't know if this was punishment for what happened on the live event because we know Vince has punished Sasha before or has criticized Sasha in the past. I don't know if this is a form of punishment or what, but can't even blame her for Emma no. You can't, but I, I'm not even saying I'm agreeing with with Vince McMahon. This is just it was random, and I'm it like had okay, nothing else for her to do. Yeah, sure, but at least she was on TV, right? She won, so yeah. whatever. The Miss uh, SB Miss Hippopotamus. She's not that anymore. She's not that <laughs> bored. Both women's matches this week were just bad. Yeah, again, snooze fest. Alicia Fox. That's right, Chuggy Brown. Main event time. Dean Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt. It was made. The match was made earlier when Miz was complaining about what Ambrose did in the beginning of the show, and then uh, complaining that basically Ambrose has taken over the show by himself and not including Miz into any GM things. And Miz ended up booking Wyatt versus Ambrose. 
and Miz is on commentary for this. Eventually, he left the desk, and as Ambrose was rolling Wyatt back into the ring in, at some point in the match, uh, Miz grabbed the, ti- the icy title and attacked uh, Ambrose from behind with it, rolled him into the ring, eventually led to a sister Abigail from Bray Wyatt, and then Miz cut a promo on a downed Ambrose to end the show. I mean, you're going to get stuff like this when you have no universal title on the show. So, so that's, what's, what's, that's the ending we got. So what's the next feud for these guys? Is it Miz Ambrose? I don't even know what the hell. I don't even think WWE knows what the hell is going on. I think they're trying to figure out what the situation is with the universal title, which we'll get into later. And then f- when they finally pick a decision, they'll stem it into the mid card and figure out what to do with everybody else. Right now, we're just going to get a Everyone's shake everywhere. up of random shit every week until. We don't know then. who's feuding with who. Who's is Bray feuding? Because with like we heard that Ambrose, Ambrose and White were supposed Finn? to feud, right? Yeah. And then the Miz was supposed to feud with uh, Balor. Balor, but that doesn't look like it's happening. They still have to do the Balor White thing. Did it? Balor had did he feast? Okay, both these guys faced each other's opponents for their feuds, but their the feuds crisscrossed. And why did nothing to do? Why did nothing to Balor this week? Even though he did something to him the last two weeks, did he just completely and forget why didn't about Balor it? Balor say anything about Wyatt attacking him? Right. <laughs> just good. It was again lazy. Like I said, this was a lazy week by WWE. They did a terrible job. <laughs> I think that the Superstar Shake Up was a better show than this crap, and that's sad because, like we said before, the UK fans deserve so much better than this bullshit. And for that, I gave Raw a two out of ten. Two. Straight two. If I were them, I wouldn't have even... I would have just, like, left. That was terrible. Yeah. Or I wouldn't go back... Like, I would, like, boycott the next show they go to. Right. They're yeah. not going to give They should just not show up for SmackDown. But they did. And I gave Raw a two. You're giving it a two, eh? Yeah. I'll give it a one. And two was because of... Rollins and or Joe's promo. It, it literally just went to Rollins and Joe. They basically almost saved the show. I'm gonna give it a one. Okay, yeah, fair rating. It was bad. It's terrible. So we get into SmackDown. They actually showed up for this, and they sold out SmackDown. They had two se- two sellout nights, but we got lazy booking. Feel that's how I feel bad for the UK guys, man. UK fans are one of the best fans in the world for WWE. Anyways. Again, it was from the O2 Arena, not live, taped from the O2 Arena in London, England. Uh, opening segment, I named it Cluster of Talent, because I don't know what the hell was going on in this opening segment. We started out with Orton and Jinder Mahal building their feud, and Mahal... I can't listen to this guy talk, man. It, especially with Orton. Two, two boring personalities <laughs> clashing together for a feud for the main title is like the worst idea ever. And it clearly showed this week because I fell asleep the first 10 seconds in the SmackDown. Literally, it did nothing for me. It's probably the cringiest thing I've ever seen. Just saying. Eventually, Owens came out to shed some light, but he ba- <laughs> it was hilarious. He's like, let's be honest, guys. No one cares about the House of Horrors. No one cares about this feud. No one cares about India. <laughs> and the crowd was laughing and cheering Owens, and he's like, oh, hold up. No one cares about UK either. <laughs> He just knows how to work a crowd. Yeah, it's oh my perfect. god. That's why Owens is the best. And he says people should be all people should be caring about is Owens and his, how he's the new face of America. Again, perfect heel. Um so he gets interrupted by Styles and Styles comes out and talks about their feud and cutting a promo on each other and how he's the uh this is the place that AJ Styles built, you know, yada yada yada, the same crap we've been hearing for the last two weeks. Uh, then Corbin, for some reason, starts coming out. But, like, mid-sentence, he gets attacked from behind by Sami Zayn. And then everyone just starts attacking each other. Just out of nowhere, just like, all right. So your Sami Zayn comes out, we just all start brawling, all right, guys? All right, there he goes. Bro, brawl. You guys, you guys, you guys. <laughs> so Zayn started brawling with Corbin. Styles started brawling with Owens. And then Mahal started brawling with Orton. Kind of, it, it, it took a time for them to, to brawl because it was weird. Because Styles and Owens started attacking each other while Zayn and Corbin were attacking each other. But Orton and Mahal kind of like backed off for a little bit. They didn't start right away. That's why I felt off. And it was just a cluster. And it ends up with both sides splitting up with the bad guys on the outside, the good guys in the ring. And from there, we definitely knew where the hell it was going. Smackdown. Long esque. Yep. And that's what we got later in the main event. But we'll talk about the rest of the show. Uh, <laughs> Juggy Brown, no list of ten because the whole week made the list. <laughs> exactly. Couldn't set it better myself. Yeah. Um. Get to this though. The welcoming committee. 
they actually stayed with it. I cannot believe that we were actually staying with calling this group the Welcoming Committee. What is up with WWE with the great names lately, man? The Welcoming Committee, Great Balls of Fire. Who's making these names right now, man? I really want to know. Who the hell is it? It's not Road Dog. 100% it's not Road Dog. I think the guy could come up with better crap than that, man. It's Vince. It's Vince. Gotta be, man. The guy's senile. He can't even fly to California. I don't know if anyone knows this out there, but Vince didn't fly to Payback, Raw, or Smack. Especially Payback's a big deal because Vince goes to every pay-per-view. But he didn't go to Payback because he, he, he's not liking flying more and more now, and he's losing it a little bit. So... Again, it's probably from Vince. Who cares? Or someone presented the idea to Vince, and it was a bad idea, but he said it was a good one anyways. And everyone's like, oh, my God, why the hell is he accepting this idea? But everyone has to go around with it because it's ultimately Vince's decision in the long run. He could ask, like, 20 guys for help, but Vince is going to be like, no, no, we're still going to go with my idea. And then everyone has to say, okay, Vince, yeah, you're right. Good job. <laughs> it's terrible. So the welcoming committee <sighs> with James Ellsworth. Worth any man lists. With two Cringe worth. Can't wait for his Mattel figure. Looks like a cracked out John Cena. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. She, uh, it led to them three coming out. And then Naomi came out and then presented Becky Lynch. And then Becky Lynch is going to face Natalia. And then Charlotte came out and she cut a, she cut a promo and it wasn't really heelish. And it wasn't really babyface. It was right in the middle. So it doesn't look like they're completely turning Charlotte babyface, which we'll get into the news because I guess there's reports saying that... Um, Charlotte's not going to be babyface anymore. Darby's kind of changing her minds on that. It's Thank a good God. idea because she's a cringe babyface. Um, Natalia faced Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch actually got a re- really good reaction. They did the whole uh, Tyler Bate chant where they were like, Becky, Becky Lynch, Becky Lynch, Becky, Becky Lynch. <laughs> oh it was great. <laughs> um, but nothing exciting. The match wasn't exciting. Okay, it was. We got the normal interference from everybody. Um, it almost looked like Naomi caused uh, Becky Lynch uh, the match with uh, her interference because it led to N- Natalie or Natalie Natalia <laughs> winning on the roll up. Ooh, wow! Some right? deception between these th- this match that we're gonna have the three on three or th- nothing came out of this. There's a thing. There's an argument backstage when Naomi and Charlotte where Charlotte was like calling Naomi out for costing Becky the match, and Becky was trying to say to like, "Look, guys, we have to be on the same page," kind of thing, and then. Charlotte kind of said something. I forget what she said, but it was, again, it was like right in the middle. It wasn't fully heel. It wasn't fully baby face. It, I kind of feel like Charlotte's going to turn on them at the pay-per-view. I think she's going to turn on them, walk out of the match or something like that. I got this feeling. People, I, I would be interested to see if Becky would be the one to turn. I think that Can you imagine everyone is expecting Charlotte to turn and Becky ends up doing it? Do the Chicago crowd would go nuts over that. It would be that. good for Becky, yeah. Yeah, honestly. I mean, yeah. but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we had another fashion file. I didn't see it, but from what I seen and heard, it was hilarious. Uh, it looked like they're doing stuff backstage at SmackDown. So, whatever. If it was, I have to go back and watch it. I heard it was funny and entertaining. It probably was. It's probably the only thing good on SmackDown this week out of everything. But uh, uh, we had Eric Rowan face Luke Harper. Wow, wow. another exciting match. It's great, man. Can't, can't believe people couldn't keep their eyes off the TV here. Nuts. Crowd was dead though. I read reports the crowd was actually really dead, and I only saw the highlights of this. It didn't sound like they were too lively. It wasn't really... When I was watching the highlights for this, I didn't have the sound fully on, so I couldn't tell if the crowd was dead or not. But from what I read, it was they were dead. But I don't blame them for a match like this. Who, who can get behind Eric Rowan versus Luke Harper? And what happened to this big Luke Harper push we were supposed to get? Yeah, that never happened. Now he's stuck facing Eric Rowan every other week. And he loses to Eric And he loses because Eric Rowan won! He even had a cheap... I guess uh, he cheap shot him by hitting it, raking the eyes or something. And the crowd had, apparently had no effect on it either. They, they're still quiet, even for the three count. They're like, oh, cool, Eric Rowan won. It's Luke Harper. That's a good match. I think I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, move on. Ziggler comes out to call out Nakamura. Cut a promo on him first. Uh, Nakamura eventually comes out. He got a good reaction. Now, obviously, the UK crowd, they love Nakamura. And he cuts off Dolph Ziggler and tells him to shut up. And Nakamura basically uh, says he, to Ziggler, okay, I'll prove myself right now since you want me to prove myself. Calls for a ref to get in the ring. And then Ziggler's kind of like, oh, yeah, you want to have a match now? Let's go. Come on, you want to have a match? And then Ziggler kind of just declines and bails and says, we're going to wait for backlash. You know what? Typical. I'm okay with that. I mean, this feud... He has to build heat. Ziggler needs to build as much heat on him as possible for Nakamura's reaction and the way they're going to pull the backlash match off. 
I think it's going to be a good match. Mm-hmm. Uh, but aside from this, Ziggler is an excellent wrestler. Him versus Nakamura, these two styles clashing, the <laughs> pun here, is going to be a good match. <laughs> if only the styles clash was in this match. But no, <laughs> Can you imagine Triple Threat? I, it, it I think it's going to steal the show with Backlash. I think yeah. it's going to be the match of the night. If they're smart, I, I, if they're booking so much, it looks like, just from what I read, I read a report saying that it wasn't really a report, it was this guy's uh, opinion that he thinks that the, the main event of Backlash should be Ziggler and Nakamura because they're building Backlash all around Nakamura. Literally, the, 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 the promo video, any, anytime they talk about Backlash, they talk about Nakamura instantly. They, it's just I wouldn't be surprised if they did it. And if they did it, I don't care. If that was the main event, I wouldn't give a shit. You know I don't think the Chicago crowd match. wouldn't care. I you think know, that's going to be a good match. And if from, it, Chicago crowd's going to shit all over Orton and Jinder. Yeah, if that's, that's the main, main event, event, oh my god, please don't, man. They're smart enough to put Goldberg and Brock Lesnar not in the main event at WrestleMania because that would have been shit all over. I'm just saying, um, if they put Ziggler and knock more in the main event that'd make more sense than Jinder and Orton <laughs> and if they're trying to build it like I read they're trying to build it like a knock more Zane kind of match it, 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 they can't really do the same because they didn't ha- they kept knock more off TV until takeover in, in his first appearance if they wanted it like that they should just kept knock more off TV until backlash but then we would have had people complaining left and right right but anyways um, we had this cringy backstage segment um, it was Zayn, Styles, and Orton getting ready for their match. And Zayn was, like, talking to all of them, but, like, very annoyingly. Like, he was, like... The way he was talking, you have to go and see it. It was like, oh, my God, he's not acting like himself. He's acting like this jobber character that Z- Zayn is, port- is supposed to be doing right now. And it was just bad. He did this thing where, like, he was imagining the ref or the announcer calling all three of their names out to win the match, and he was closing his eyes, and then Orton and Styles walked away. And when he opened his eyes, they were gone. Wow. I'm like, what the fuck is this PG bullshit? It was bad. It, it looked cringe. I'm like, oh my god. Is this what Zayn's dumbing down to now? We thought SmackDown was going to save him. It's done nothing. So, is Styles a face, or what's going on? I guess. But the way he was talking, he's still cocky. So maybe they did the way we, we predicted or wanted him to go. Like, he would switch to babyface, but he wouldn't be fully babyface. He would still act cocky and still act like a heel. Like, he's right in the middle, like the perfect tweener. So I think that's what he is. Just my opinion. We eventually had uh, Fashion Police versus the Ascension. Literally, it was an under two-minute match because the Ascension got buried by the Fashion Police. <laughs> it's it sad the- when you can't even beat the Fashion Police, man. But they're the one of one contenders now. Yeah, and then the Usos came out and cut a promo on the Fashion Police talking about their backlash match. It's going to be one-on-one. We thought, eventually thought it was going to be like a, a multi-man tag team match, but it's going to be one-on-one. Fashion Police versus the Usos. I'm okay with that. I wouldn't be shocked if the Fashion Police made the upset win, man. Could you imagine? That'd be great. I, I'm actually looking forward to that match. Usos yeah. versus Fashion Police. I yeah. actually like that. Oh, Michael Chow joins the chat. The champ is here. The host from the West Coast. The host Joining it right at the end of our SmackDown review, Michael Chow. We did a really quick review because this week was this week sucked. So we kind of point-formed everything. And we'll get into the rest of the show uh, once we're done here. Uh, we had a stupid backstage story thing with Mojo Rawley and his dream with the... Andre the Giant Trophy did nothing for me, so I didn't care. Uh, then we had a pre-recorded message from Rusev's Twitter saying he'll be on SmackDown next week to get Shane McMahon to finally answer him. I liked, I liked like that Rusev's thing. bio on Twitter is hilarious. This is uh, something like, Shane, I'm coming for you or something like that. <laughs> I actually liked this promo by by Rusev, and it was, he wasn't even on the show. Dude, I think SmackDown is going to be the resurgence of Rusev when he comes back finally. I, I, like Just from that promo, I was actually like hyped for Rusev. <laughs> right? Because he, uh, he, he came out... Or he didn't come out, but on the promo he said, I have heard nothing since my request for a championship match at Money in the Bank. Dude, he should just wait. He should not come out next week. Just wait for money or wait for backlash and come out at backlash. I guarantee you get the biggest reaction out of the Chicago crowd. <laughs> and if you wanted to turn him babyface, that'd be the perfect opportunity. I, I'm actually looking forward to what Rusev's going to do on SmackDown. Mm-hmm. I honestly Especially think he's, without Lana. Yeah, he's, he's gonna, this, I think this is going to be the resurgence of Rusev. I like it. Well, it's sort of without Lana because she's going to be in the women's division of SmackDown. I wouldn't be surprised if they do like a run-in backstage or something. I don't know. Um, I hope they never put them together. I hope it's not a dancing gimmick with Rusev. That <laughs> oh, handsome Rusev. Oh, stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> he's not handsome, man. You see his beard? He's not handsome Rusev anymore. And he's got really short hair. He like shaved it. So. According to Lana, he's... <laughs> oh my god, Michael Chow. Yeah, Mojo's segment was so bad. The kids were kicking him. <laughs> Hashtag curse of the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. <laughs> 
Oh man, it was bad, Michael Chow. I couldn't. I watched it and I'm like, oh god, I really didn't need to watch it. <laughs> Did we miss something on Raw with the Titus brand? No. Did something happen on Raw with the Titus brand? I didn't I read it remember. when I was doing the review. Was there something with him and him and Apollo Cruz? I can't remember. I don't remember. Yeah, that's Raw was so bad. I don't remember. I don't remember. If you guys remember, say something, but I don't uh, remember anything with Titus Brand. May event of SmackDown with Styles, Zayn Norton against Mahal, Owens, and Corbin. Wow. Standard SmackDown tag yeah. team match. It was decent. It was okay. I thought it was all right. They had a decent showcase by everyone, but we end up with Mahal winning and standing tall. Out of everybody in that ring, Mahal is the one standing tall. Are you fucking kidding me, <laughs> In a me, match man? with Styles, Zayn, Orton, Owens, Come and on. Corbin. I know you're trying to push the whole India bullshit, but come on, man. Mahal. Were the Singh brothers involved oh, in this Oh, yeah, they were involved in this goddamn match. They're always involved every goddamn week. Throwing my notes back there. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it, was, it was bad. I gave SmackDown a two. I gave both of them equal scores for being equally bad this week. I'm giving them both a one. <laughs> it's a Michael Chalice. Titus might be in trouble because of the whole Roman Braun uh, Rome group picture. Probably why Titus Brand wasn't used this week. No, he's in trouble because apparently he's got a lawsuit. Oh, yeah, that, the lawsuit. <laughs> <situation>. <laughs> apparently, uh, there's the whole cattle prog thing on Swerve. I don't know if anyone remembers. but uh, was going around hitting people with yeah, cattle Titus, prog. I guess... Uh, Prog the, the 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 or shock no the, I think he, I think he shocked the cameraman now the cameraman is suing Titus for like two million dollars no it was because Titus got shocked and he was pissed off and he shoved the cameraman. oh he shoved yeah and then he sued him for two million dollars <laughs> what is that you can sue anyone for anything nowadays oh my Ooh. god Juggy Brown I'd rather watch paint dry while Julian Mahal sings than watch WWE next week. <laughs> Or then I've watched it be this week. Okay. <laughs> Julian Hall singing. Oh, man. Uh, I'm giving it a one. I'm giving them both a one. They were both yeah. terrible. They're equally as bad. Equally as bad. No Ty Dillinger this week. Yeah, where was he? Because he was in a dark match. Against Aiden English again. <laughs> again. You couldn't put that on TV at least. Come on, man. I'm sure he, I'm sure the 10 chants were. Oh, not- they were. I, I watched the live videos from people. Unfucking believable They don't put this guy on TV. Why aren't they using this guy? Oh, this this week sucked. Again, like we hesitated. We almost didn't do the review today, guys. Look, we're only thirty seven minutes into the show, and I'm done the review. That's how bad it was. That's how bad it was. So, for the rest of the show, ladies and gentlemen, I guess I'll give you guys the lowdown, pun intended. We gotta read their tweets of what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the tweets first. So again, I didn't do them in the beginning of the show because I wanted to get the review done. We're gonna do the tweets. We're getting some news. Got some news. Lots of news coming out of this week. And uh, if you guys want to call into the show. Let me know in the chat. I'll let you call in, and we'll just chat about this week and <laughs> just chat what your opinions are. Um, so, yeah, let's get into the tweets. Let me open them up here. God, man. Just, we got a lot of tweets this week, at we least. We do got a lot of tweets this week. Um, the show, though, was really bad. <laughs> I was surprised we got a lot of tweets. I wasn't I, I, I wasn't going to be surprised if you guys didn't want to tweet into the show because... <laughs> there wasn't a reason to. There wasn't a reason to tweet into the show. Um, just pull them up here. All right, I've got to go to the first one. I, I did. I sent out a couple of tweets. There we go, the first one, and we got to start off with our Twitter fan of the month for the month of April, and that is Casey Salvis at Salvis ninety four. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know what Twitter fan of the month is, is if we pick you to be Twitter fan of the month for interacting and sending your tweets every show, interacting with us in the chat, and just talking wrestling with us, we pick you. You get to have your tweets read first, right here on the show, and a shout out every single show. Um. So, Casey Salvis, S 794 shout-outs to you, son, for winning Twitter Fan of the Month for April. Oh, let's hear these. Let's get into this tweet. (laughs) Raw was a train wreck. (laughs) Fell asleep for most of the show because it was so boring. Nothing important happened. Love that Reigns got booed out of the building. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) From what you heard, there was more booze. It was still loud even if they added the crowd noise he puts. He gave Raw a 1.5 out of 10. Uh... (laughs) <laughs> Chucky Brown, this week gave me cancer. <laughs> uh, hashtag garbage show, hashtag garbage reigns. Uh, Casey also, but SmackDown was no better. Randy Orton is the most boring character I've ever seen. Nothing he does is interesting. Please bring back the legend killer gimmick. Also, nobody cares about Mahal. Can't he just go away for a while? The only thing I liked about the show was Brazongo's segment. I thought it was funny. Hope they win the tag titles. They deserve it. And he gave SmackDown a four. Out of 10. Jesus. 
But he still hashtagged it, garbage show. And then he gave us another tweet. This is what I think of Ron Smackdown this week, and it's a sloth yawning. You know what's bad when the sloth is tired and yawning? <laughs> what? Uh, I, don't know. I gave it two corporate ones this week. But two corporate ones. Four. Uh, I can't. Four I agree with him about the Brazongo thing. That's probably the only thing I got hyped. I think he gave week. all the points to Brazongo. I think he would have given it to zero if it didn't happen. I, 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 my one was for Brazongo too. Yeah. Um, Colin Gemma and you won. My boy Colin only gave us one tweet, and I understand why, because it was so bad this week. He just said, eh. <laughs> that was it. For Raw SmackDown, he gives us an eh. Thank you, Colin. Get me you one for well, your uh, in-depth tweets. review. In-depth review. Guys, he does actually a lot of YouTube content. I didn't, uh, I didn't really notice it the other week, and I'm sorry, Colin, for not noticing, but uh, Colin does a lot of YouTube uh, stuff. He does a lot of uh, gaming stuff. He does a lot of 2K stuff. So go check him out on... Uh, on, on YouTube, I'm not sure what his link is, but it's probably in his Twitter bio. Yeah, I'm if sure. you go to at Gamma and you won, he's got a, a YouTube link as well. So go check him out. He's got some YouTube videos. So, uh, <clears throat> good job, Colin. Keep up the good job, or keep work, keep up the good work. Keep up uh, with the the you know the nice tweets. Yeah, uh, the eh <laughs> <laughs> tweets. <laughs> Glorious Greg X Gilly nine two nine who couldn't come uh, uh, listen to the show or interact with the show today. He had prior commitments. That's all right, uh, Glorious Greg. Um, he puts Raw was okay Just sucks that it was taped I don't really know I don't really don't know What they're doing With Enzo and Cass uh, Me either Who knows what they're doing I feel like they've been uh, Ruined Enzo and Cass Should have gone to Smackdown And it was nice to see The Hardy Boys As always I'll give Raw 4 to 10 this week Oof Did we talk about that Tag team segment? Yeah the turmoil Yeah Yeah Enzo and Cass Were the first team oh, yeah they were the and first then, team Eliminated But like Enzo and Sheamus and Cesaro Literally beat everybody It's crazy um, I don't know what to do with Enzo and Cash. Are they are they gonna split them up? Again, I thought it was gonna. I thought they were gonna go over to SmackDown and team up with Car- Carmella and Ellsworth is the worst idea. But I guess they love the Welcome Committee way better than Enzo and Cass reuniting with her. Heaven forbid you did that because it was the best thing going in NXT. You know what? I I wouldn't mind just having Enzo as Cass's manager and just have Cass yeah? go on like a singles run. With Enzo as his manager. And he gets all the way up to, like, Braun Strowman, have a big cast and Braun Strowman feud going. And That'd Enzo be crazy. Can jaw for, like, it could be a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Juggy Brown's just, <laughs> fuck you, Greg, with the generous score. <laughs> uh, Glorious Greg for SmackDown was okay. It was fun seeing the Fashion Files segment with Brazongo. And Randy as champion st- still feels boring, but AJ and Owens will be amazing. I'm guessing he's saying at Backlash. And Corbin versus Zayn should be a good one, too. Ah, that actually should be not bad. And I'm hyped for the return of Rusev next week. It was good to see the Usos, so I'll give SmackDown a 6 out of 10. 6. Holy crap. Man, that... But no Ty Dillinger, which sucks. Also sucks that Strowman is injured. But this is for him. But this is for him. Long live Strowman. God, he, man. He, he had to get it in, eh? <laughs> Michael Charles Enzo should be going to should go to two hundred five live. Big Cash should go after the middle or main card belt. Cash is good with the universal title or was good in the universal tournament. I, I remember that he had a good showing at that tournament. I think Michael Charles talked about that on his podcast one time. I I, I would like. Enzo to go to the 205 Live Division too because he has a good personality. Yeah, he There's could not literally really much personality going on in the 205. He could Live bring division. that a lot of that personality to 205 Live and, and make it into something more than it already is. So I think that's a good idea. Even with like Arya Davari and Brian Kendrick, mm-hmm. and I think he could be a, a really good, credible yeah. top babyface in the 205 Live Division. I like that. We're getting the corporate tweet, Mason Dunbar at Mason Storm WPC on Twitter. Uh, he puts my thoughts. Or both were pretty good this week. I gave Raw a 6 out of 10 on my podcast. SmackDown was pretty good. 7 out of 10. So SmackDown wins, but barely. Damn, those are high scores, Mason Dunbar. You kind of corrected yourself in the in the chat. You're saying, oh, I, I realize it now. I'm glad you realize it now. It was... The week was... Could, I could even put it in the mediocre category. You know it was lazy. Like I said, you have your own likes and dislikes that you like personally. Yeah. We're not going to... We're not going to slam no. anybody. Yeah, we're not going to make something. people like think what we like. That's just your personality. Your your opinions, and <laughs> this it, is our they, opinion. They differ from ours, whatever, but yeah. I, I completely yeah. disagree so, with the 7 and the 6 ratings. Mr. Mason Dunbar has his own podcast, guys. He's also on Spreaker, so go Matt check him Mason out. At Mason Storm. At Mason Storm. Not Dunbar, at Mason Storm. <laughs> Repackaged. Repackaged Mason Storm. Uh, Trey Patterson, at Trey Patterson on Twitter. 
but Raw was straight ass this week. <laughs> the tag team turmoil was the best part of the show, and it was still pretty bad. Braun getting hurt sucks too because now Reigns is all, is all but guaranteed a universal title shot. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. 2.5 out of 10, he puts. Hashtag Romans is still shit. <laughs> Everyone hating on your boy, Juggy Brown, man. I Every feel bad week, for I, you. Last week, he didn't get roasted that bad. No, he's getting roasted pretty bad this week so far. <laughs> um, Trey Patterson also puts SmackDown was surprisingly good. Good. Okay. Again, other people's opinions. Good. Uh, Becky Lynch, Natalia, and Eric. <laughs> Becky Lynch, Natalia, and Eric Rowan, and Luke Harper were the worst parts of the show. <laughs> I can't definitely agree with that. But other than that, I actually enjoyed the show. The build-up for Backlash has been better than other pay-per-views this year. In a way, he's right. I'm legitimately excited for 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 uh, for Backlash. I am too. Backlash looks like it's going to be a really good pay-per-view. It's probably going to beat Payback out of the water. Payback's build-up was horrific. Yeah, he um, gave us uh, SmackDown two. Uh, or I'm actually excited for two thirds of the scheduled matches. Okay, four backlash. Six out of ten he puts for SmackDown. Hashtag Smack It Down, man. He Jericho, and he's got the that. Jericho gift coat. <laughs> uh, the thing where the, he puts his arm him. in front of Tom Phillips' face. <laughs> Jericho equals ratings. Oh but, man! Like the most of the matches, the first first backlash besides Jinder and Orton. Yeah, actually look pretty good. They do. This week was just lazy. They took a week off this week because they're all traveling around yeah. all the different countries in Europe. It's true. We'll see what happens next week. No promises, though. Uh, I, I think next week's in Connecticut, actually. Oh, man. I think. Don't take my word for it. Um, <laughs> Michael Chow, Eric Rowan has a new finisher, the world's weakest slam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, next week's Tyler Jones. At Tyler Jones twenty two on Twitter, Ty Easy, Ty Leasy. Congrats uh, to his Nashville Predators. Yep, <laughs> he puts Raw was trash as usual. SmackDown wasn't bad as I thought it would be, but still rough. Both got a rating of wet. He's got the wet lady as a gif. <laughs> uh, also, Greg is trying to start another NHBWP fan feud. Can you realize I? Because you realize I buried Irrelevance. Notice he doesn't post anymore. <laughs> he is right, Irrelevance. Where are you at? Where are you at, Irrelevance? Did you get really that buried by Tyler Jones taking Braun's tweets from you? God, it's insane. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe not a good idea for Greg to start a feud with him. <laughs> Mason Dunbar puts uh, Backlash in Chicago. Unfortunately, I can't afford to go to it. It's a pay-per-view, Mason Dunbar. If you can't afford to go to pay-per-view, that's not, it's not your fault, man. Pay-per-views are expensive as fuck. <laughs> They are. They're always over. Our our whole takeover in Survivor Series weekend wasn't cheap for us, man. That was that took a whole that took a big shot in our wallets, man. But we we had to do it for it coming for the first time and probably the only time we're ever gonna get a takeover. Maybe we had to do it. Um, Ty Jones says, "I'll put that kid to sleep just like hey Dewa Tommy did it to his father. It'll be glorious." <laughs> Woo! Twitter, oh man, Twitter fan. So are we, are uh, we fights doing? A, I love it. Are we doing the NHBWP brand shakeup with the new feuds? No, uh, maybe. Maybe we got a. Uh, I think that's just what it is. This is the NHBWP shape, yeah. superstar Twitter fan shakeup? Junkie, you got to find a feud with someone else, man. It looks like Tyler Jones and Greg are going at it now. Yeah, maybe Casey because he hates your boy uh, Roman. Roman Reigns. Yeah, there you go. Speaking of Juggy, Juggy Badass, that's Zazel YT. He's got his own YouTube channel, so go check him out, guys. His tweets: The big dog wants you to know how much I love y'all. I just wasted five hours of my time watching wrestling. So cringe. Dixie Carter run Impact Wrestling was better than this dumpster <laughs> fire. <laughs> Can't believe you watched five hours worth. Yeah. How about you change the name Brand Wars from Raw to Smack, from Raw and Smack Alive to Two Hundred Five Live and NXT because the shakeup has officially killed the main roster. I don't even do Brand Wars anymore. I cut that out before WrestleMania or after WrestleMania. I just I don't do it anymore because. <laughs> Juggy Brown with hashtag fuck you Casey in the chat. <laughs> yes, new um, feuds. Raw gets a one out of the ten. SmackDown Live gets a corporate zero point five out of ten from Juggy Brown. Was the point five for Brazongo at least? Probably. Yeah, Juggy Brown. Let's know in the chat if the point five was for uh, Brazongo. Uh, now let me get <laughs> now let me get to go why this bad aftertaste out of my mouth. Watch this bad aftertaste out of my mouth after watching this garbage. And he's got the. The gif of the guy from uh, Star Trek on oh, what the hell. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to watch all that, uh, Juggy Brown, but thank you for doing it and giving us your opinions on this week. It was as dry as a Robo Charlotte promo. Yeah, really do appreciate it. 
Dry the robo parts. <laughs> uh, okay, get into the, the tweets here from Michael Chow. That's right. They come from Michael Chow at Michael Chow TV on Twitter. And the reason he has his own theme music, ladies and gentlemen, is he won our 2016 No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast Twitter Fan of the Year. And if you win and be, if you win that and get that honor, of being our Fan of the Year, you get your own theme song before at each and every tweet we read out on the show. So Michael Chow also has his own wrestling podcast, and he's also on Spreaker, and he's in the works with some YouTube stuff. So go check him out, guys. Go through our followers on Spreaker to go give him a follow and listen Michael to Chow his stuff. TV or hashtag WWMCTV. Yeah, really good stuff, guys. And he's got he's got prizes too. He gives away, so go check him out. Really good stuff. Uh, Michael Chow puts both shows were really bad for such a great UK crowd. Even both shows, authority figures didn't even show up because they knew it was bad. <laughs> Well, Daniel Bryan, we understand why he was away. Yeah, where was Shane? Shane? I remember seeing him on the show this week. I don't remember either. I, I don't think he I was on. He came out, but he might not. No, he's not on the show. I don't know. I, I don't remember this week. I really just, like, <laughs> did, I really, like, deleted it. Deleted you it! You deleted it! You did. You rendered it obsolete! Basically. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> Raw 3 out of 10. Don't know which was worse, Nia Jax trying to sell her promo or Roman trying to sell his injuries. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I don't know what was worse. Sorry, Juggy, but it's true. Um, so Bray screws Balor over last week, and this week there's no interaction between the two exactly. at all. You're right? <laughs> Creative is so useful as JBL and it is to a Be A Star program. <laughs> oh, 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 my God. Shots Bars. fired. Pew, pew. <laughs> broken Michael Chow over here. Oh my god. Smackdown Live gets a 2 out of 10. I could have had better time watching two episodes of Total Divas. <laughs> and that's not saying much. He's got a gif of Eva Marie. <laughs> oh, oh god. Cringe. She's hot, but still, she's cringe. Um, so the welcoming committee are women who felt they weren't getting title shots, but at Backlash, no one gets a title shot. <laughs> Bravo, girls. Bravo. <laughs> Why do we need this six-woman tag match? <laughs> and we don't have the title being defended. Great. Uh, Backlash could have been a 10 out of 10 pay-per-view, man. It would have been great. There uh, probably won't even be a perfect 10 on it. No, probably not. He'll probably be in the pre-show. He's going to face Aiden English in the pre-show. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this is Vince's superstar shakeup trying to put out the dumpster fire. <laughs> As you can see, very unsuccessful. It's two firemen <laughs> trying to put out a dumpster fire, but the hose is not going. <laughs> Oh, that's great. And those are the tweets for this week, man. By the way, where was uh, the guy that everybody has to beat to, you know, you want to be credible on SmackDown, you got to go through Sin Cara. Where was he this week? Yeah, where's Sin Cara, man? Because, you know, apparently for Dolph Ziggler to be credible to face Shinsuke Nakamura, he had to face, you know, Sin Cara last week, the stepping stone, right? (laughs) I mean, you want to make it big here on SmackDown, you got to face Sin Cara. I bet you... Who just Sty- got there two weeks yeah, ago? Yeah, I bet you Styles at the face. Or, you know, Styles still has to go up against. I mean, I can't take Owens and Styles seriously right now because they didn't face Sinkara. <laughs> if they face Sinkara, then I would take him seriously. Man. I can't I believe they said that. <laughs> it was bad. Trust me, it was bad. Um, <laughs> this week was something else. This week was something else, to say the least. Seriously, to say the least. Um. Let's just get into the move on to the show, and I got uh, we got some news. There's lots of news this week, so hit that headline music. That's right. Welcome to WWE Headlines, ladies and gentlemen. The part of the show where me or myself and Corporate Cappy talk about any important news. And headlines and rumors going on in the WWE. We have lots. Let's have lots. And uh, exactly, I don't have them in order. So bear with me. I'm reading them off the the website here. I have tabbed. So we'll go over each one. We'll just talk about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, Michael Chow, why isn't Kalisto wrestling out? Why is Kalisto wrestling outside the 205 Live division? <laughs> he should be. Remember when we talked about that he should be on 205 Live and he'd be great for that division? He would be. Yeah, they, they changed his theme song and everything. Nope. Nope, nope. We're repacking you to get schooled by Braun Strowman. Anyways, we got a Zack Ryder injury update. So, uh, if you guys don't know, he's got he's doing the Z Hollywood True Comeback Stories. And he's uh, trained to get back into the ring. Uh, the update to him is uh, 
Zack Ryder recently returned to the ring at the Performance Center to begin training to his WWE SmackDown return. Ryder has been out of action since December with a knee injury. Ryder noted on Twitter that he was training with WWE NXT superstar Oni Lorcan this week. Ooh, Ooh Oni Lorcan helping Ryder get back in the ring. Who knows? Maybe, maybe Ry- I don't think Ryder's going to come back and do anything. What am I talking about? Come on. <laughs> Well, is he going to come back with Mojo? I don't know. I don't think they're going to do the hype roasting. Maybe they do because what the hell is Mojo doing right? other than promoting his... Maybe they do a feud between Mojo and Zack Ryder. Maybe like Zack Ryder wants to get the team back together, but he's so caught up in being under the giant Memorial Battle Royal, he turns heel, and then he goes against Zack Ryder. I could see those two feuding. I'm just not into the whole Mojo Raleigh thing. Yeah. I just can't get behind him. Yeah. Never been news. Your girl Alexa has a new plaque today. You showed me when we were out uh, having lunch today. I can't. <laughs> I'm seeing, oh my god, man! Like corporate cabbie's so pissed. This thing costs like a million dollars. It's a plaque. It's a double ring canvas plaque of Alexa Bliss and her two titles. On one side, it's a blue from winning the SmackDown Women's title, and the other side, it's red from the SmackDown uh, Raw's Raw Women's title. And it's uh, each show that she won at Payback and SmackDown, and it's such a cool looking plaque. I actually love it. But the fact that us Canadians have to pay an arm and a leg for it, it sucks that Corporate Cappy won't be able to it get it. It would be like $200, and with me not working yet, I can't yeah. do it. I can't do it. <laughs> it sucks, man. It sucks. Exactly. It's a really cool-looking like, plaque. Uh, and it sucks there's no un- not-ring canvas for them. Like it, Usually, plaques come with a ring canvas one and a non-ring canvas one. This one doesn't have a non-ring canvas one. Well, there's 500 of them, so Michael Chow, if you want to get one, go ahead. <laughs> if you want to send it to me, you know, that'd be greatly appreciated. <laughs> That's an expense. I wonder how much I wonder how much it is US. What, like well, a, Canadian 80, 90 it works bucks? up to like two hundred dollars, so Oh f- so it's like a buck fifty US probably. Yep. Holy moly, man. What? I feel so bad for you. It's all right. I got her first plaque from her first SmackDown women's title, and I just saw on eBay that one's going for over three hundred now. Jeez, the say that plaque. Yep. Someone's already selling on eBay. Yep. No, the one that I have. Oh, the one you got. Yep. Oh, okay. Her first title plaque um got some news relevant chris jericho and what his next wb appearances will be and basically the supposed timeline for his return my birthday uh wb is holding non-televised live events in tokyo japan on june 30th mm-hmm. and july 1st on their website and they're promoting y2j for both shows jericho uh beat kevin owens for the united states title at payback and then lost it on the smackdown right after he's written off tv after a post-match attack by owens He's currently on tour with Fozzie up until the end of June, June 28th. I'm shocked exactly. that they are not touring for the whole summer. So that is the current rumor now saying that Jericho will be returning back to television beginning, the, I guess, the week of uh, July 1st uh, into the next week See, after that. I don't know if that if that's just going to be a one-off, though, because he's maybe yeah. he's touring there, and maybe it just works out that he's there and WWE's there. Who knows? He just does a show for the Japan crowd, yeah, and then he goes back on tour again. Because he did that in Toronto one time. Yeah, he did. Maybe it's, they're doing that. Who knows? But uh, so far, that's the current rumor. So we'll base it off a rumor. Uh, no Mercy news. There will be No Mercy will be held on September 24th at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. Michael Chow, man. I don't know if you want to make a trip over there. But this year is going to be a Raw branded nope, pay-per-view. Nope, he ain't going to a Raw pay-per-view. <laughs> Last year's show was uh, SmackDown pay-per-view with Bray Wyatt defeating Orton for the in the main event. And the show included a career versus title match with Dolph Ziggler winning the IC title from Miz. That was unbelievable match. That was one of the matches of the year last year. Yeah, but now it is a Raw pay-per-view. <laughs> Cappy, if you win Michael Chow TV Fan of the Year, Alexa Mania plaque is a done deal. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I got to do, man, I'll do it. <laughs> um, WWE second-guessing Charlotte's turn, as we were talking about earlier. Thank God. And there are reports, people in the WWE, that there are there were and are against the idea of Charlotte turning babyface with the feeling that it is too soon. With a tease of dis- uh, dissension between Charlotte and Naomi on this week's SmackDown Live, there's already been some speculation about Charlotte going, possibly going back to being a heel and feuding with Naomi for the women's title after Backlash. Hmm. Interesting. It would very, be a smart idea. Charlotte as a face just does not make sense. It's bad. At all. It's it's so cringe. I can't take her seriously as a as a, a robotic baby face. Maybe as a robotic heel, you know, because I am Charlotte. No one can beat me. Naomi, go and feel the glow. She's got to fix up her pro- <laughs> like. Why does she have to sound so robotic? I know she got to fix up that I don't mic know skill, why, man. Like I'm sure she doesn't have to sound like that. Like, are they telling her to t- to talk like that? In my opinion, I think. It's when she's when you, when she's sounds like she's like reading a script. 
maybe that's when she sounds robotic. I mean, she's got to start learning to, you know, know her lines maybe a little better and present it a little bit more because it's 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 true and it is all stemmed from JD doing it. And, and at first, me and Cappy were laughing at the fact, but then like when we listened to Charlotte even more, like oh my god, he's actually like right. She sounds like a robot when she talks. It's so it's terrible. And the sad part is, she probably has good potential to like be yeah. her own heel. Yeah. Um, she's got the back. She's got the hell of a wrestling ability. She's got the persona as Charlotte Flair. She has this whole robe set up thing. Like she has, she has everything there. But she's just to I don't be honest. Know. I don't think they should have ever made her lose a title. Her losing the title four times just completely killed her momentum. I think it would have if they had kept her as the champion as a heel too, and waited for Oscar to come up. I don't think you could. I think you could have called Oscar up as a babyface. Made her into a baby face, finally be the one to uh, dethrone Charlotte from the SmackDown Women's title, and then turn Oscar uh, back to what she was in NXT. Like, they really should have just kept Charlotte as the dominant champion and not have her lose the title every other month. Yeah. It's it's, it's serious. And then, and now uh, it's SmackDown. <laughs> yeah. Michael Chow says, that means there would be like four heels and two baby faces. They need to break up the unwelcoming committee. <laughs> there needs to be some, <laughs> There needs to be some kind of like double turn or something. Yeah. Watch, she'll get better mic skills when WWE signs her husband, Bram. I don't know. I don't know about that. Charlotte's married? I didn't even know she was married, I thought Mason. she was single. Mason, man, you gotta let us know about that. I didn't even know. She, I thought she was single. Anyways. You got the inside scoop here? Yeah, you got the inside scoop. Anyways, let's go. And some more news. Uh, backstage news on the Universal title and the plans for it. WWE reportedly held a meeting today, which was yesterday, not today. Uh, to discuss plans for the Universal title. Now that Braun Strowman has been injured, uh, as previously noted, Strowman was originally supposed to face Brock Lesnar for the Universal title at the gloriously named Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view. Dudley still wants to have Roman Reigns to face Brock Lesnar at next year's WrestleMania. So that's still in Vince's head right now at this point. Uh, at this point, too, Finn Balor and Seth Rollins are the top candidates to face Lesnar if next if Strowman is not able to return in time for Great Balls of Fire. Uh, with GBOF, Great Balls of Fire, taking place on July 9th, and Strowman being pulled from the July 7th live event at MSG, the fear right now is that Strowman will not be back in time and be fully recovered. So it looks like Rollins and Finn Balor haven't decided who is the next candidate. <sighs> Rollins did come out first and say that he wants yeah. Brock Lesnar again, but then again, Finn Balor never got his I th- rematch. I, I don't think it's going to be Balor either, though. They want to do the whole Balor Wyatt thing. Unless, for some weird reason, that they want to do something right for once in their lives. They have Finn Balor beat Brock Lesnar for the Universal title at Great Balls of Fire. And then Finn Balor feuds with Wyatt until SummerSlam. And they face each other for the Universal title at SummerSlam. I don't think there's any way in hell Vince lets a guy like Finn Balor beat Brock Lesnar. No. <laughs> no way. You know what? I could see some terrible prediction happening. <laughs> Brock Lesnar faces Big Show. <laughs> oh, stop. No. At what? SummerSlam? No, at Great oh, Balls okay. of Fire. Just to get it out of the way because they don't have anybody else and can't do anything. With oh, if that happens, man, I you won't watch it. I'm I'm speaking from the corporate. Like I'm looking in corporate WWE's eyes right now. I could see them doing that match. I don't want it. Yeah. Or they give it to Roman Reigns. Or they they want to save that for the main event of WrestleMania 34 oh my for some God. reason. I don't know. Oh. That's but horrible. Harry, Please don't they're... let that come true. If that comes true, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to this podcast and I'm like, oh my God, why were you right? But apparently, like you were telling me today, they're having a meeting to discuss the Universal yeah. title, the future of it. So <laughs> that's the second meeting in two days. <laughs> they're really fucking up. Yeah. Uh, reg- we got some Ever Moon injury news regarding Ever Moon's injury. The belief is that she will be out of action for at least another month. As previously noted, the injury forced her to be removed from the women's title match at NXT Takeover Chicago, and is now being booked as a triple threat with Oscar def- defending her title against Ruby Riot and uh, Nikki Cross from Sanity. Um, sucks. I'm okay with that. It, it, it sucks because Ember Moon's probably the most intriguing part of that match. I, to me, I don't think Amber Moon is gonna beat Oscar for the title. If anything, Oscar gets called up and she has to forfeit the title. Then maybe Amber Moon wins it in like a title tournament. I think that's gonna happen for some weird reason. I get this like 
strong feeling in my head that it's the title, the women's title tournament, or the women's uh, tournament, the women's tournament happening in July, will be for the the next to be determined who the next NXT champion is, and Oscar will be called up by then. You think she'll get the page treatment where she got called up and then had to yeah, forfeit? Yeah, I title? think so. I think it's best to keep her undefeated. Like, there's no way she's losing this match, in my opinion. Yeah, I I, I can't see Oscar. Losing the title in NXT. To, I think to, they call her up undefeated. The Nikki Cross or Ruby Riot. It's no. Just, nah. No. I think it'll be a decent match, but it's not going to be anything spectacular. It, it sucks that Ember Moon's that in there because she brings that whole new. She's high sick, man. She's going to be the if I, if anything. I'm I'm telling you right now, if they have no other plans, I think Ember Moon's the next top woman in the division for NXT. Right now, I'm okay with that. She has such a good presence behind her, and the crowd gets a lo- really behind her. I think that she'd be a great number one for NXT once Oscar's gone. Unless they find someone out of that women's tournament, who knows? I'm not. Behind, I, I'm not. I don't know. You guys can disagree. I'm not into Ruby Riot. She needs to be a little bit build more. Maybe I'm, repackage. I'm just not into her whole persona. I yeah. don't know. Seems stale to me. Yeah. Speaking of NXT, got some backstage news on your boy Roderick Strong Ooh. and his recent NXT TV vignettes. There's been extremely positive reactions to the vignettes Roderick Strong that were aired. If you guys don't know, it's basically like it's a couple part series on who is Roderick Strong. Um, there's a feeling that there has been a huge uh, difference in the reaction Strong has been uh, receiving at NXT live events, giving them the impression that WWE's experiment to see if vignettes are still effective was award uh, was answered positively. Um, Strong made his NXT debut in the fall of 2016 and made it clear that his goal was to be win the NXT title. He lost the number one contenders match to Hideo Tommy on this week's show and, and was attacked by Sanity after the show was ended. It appears that he will end he will end the feud with Sanity at NXT TakeOver Chicago later this month. Strong and uh, Marnina Shafir of MMA's Four Horsemen, Four Horsemen fame welcomed their first child together in late April. So I guess there's a Four Horsemen Women in MMA as well. And Roderick Strong is actually married to one of them, and they just had a baby boy. Yeah, it was in that two-part series. Yeah. Uh, the happy couple were featured in the vignettes as well, as you just said. So it looks like Roderick Strong being a groom to the next top oh, guy I, of NXT, I, I think. I'm really behind Roderick Strong. I want to see him get his shot. I think it's going to be him versus Rude at uh, SummerSlam. Uh, take over NXT Brooklyn 3? Yeah, that's going to be sick. I actually see that. And, and Roderick Strong has been in... ROH for 12 years, man. Yeah. Finally got his shot. He's good. He's good. A lot, of, a lot, and a lot of people. I've talked to a couple of people who who are not behind. A, a couple of my buddies who watch wrestling who don't know who Roderick Strong is. I had to explain it to them who Roderick Strong was. And the guy's had such a great Ring of Honor career, and he was big in Ring of Honor. So and I, I think he's got the crowd behind him. He's got like this, you know, underdog story with him. He's got a good theme song. He's got yep. a good ring presence. Yeah. I think he's a really good top babyface to go against Rude. Yeah. I, I, I see it. I honestly see it. I don't think Tommy's going to be one to dethrone Rude either. I think it's going to be just like a one-time match, and then after, I don't know, maybe Tommy finally gets called up again. Because uh, he did get called up. Tommy was on the main roster, and then he got injured, and they put him back in NXT. It's, they, he got like the same Zayn thing. He appeared in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, got hurt, mm-hmm. then went back to NXT. Like Zayn came up to the main roster in, to answer John Cena's US Challenge, got hurt, and went back to NXT. Um, I don't. I think Ryder Strong's a really good piece of talent that they, yeah. they, they can't bury. Yeah. Sure. Um, some better. Another news: Dan O'Brien, Brie Bella, daughter is born. Finally, after <laughs> after being days late, uh, <laughs> the world welcome Birdie Joe Danielson. Birdie Joe. Birdie Joe, <laughs> the daughter of Birdie Joe. <laughs> Whatever, man. I want to know if Brie or Daniel came up with that name. Birdie. Birdie. Tuesday, May 9th at 11.58 p.m. Wow, two minutes off from being a Wednesday. You know, it's unique. I'll give him that. Yeah, Birdie was born at 8 pounds, 10 ounces. Ooh, the big baby. 21 inches. Uh, here's the quote from Bree on the website of Dirty.com. There is no better feeling in the world than meeting your daughter. I can't even express the overwhelming joy and love Brian and I are feeling. Now that we are parents, it means ab- about to... <laughs> Sorry. Now we know what parents mean about the love you feel when you first meet your child. Thank you to all your thoughts and prayers on the safety of Birdie coming into this world. Oh, great for them. I mean, Bree's wanted to be a mom for a couple yeah. years now. And and maybe Birdie will be a future WWE diva, maybe not under the name Birdie, but something else. Yeah, I mean, both your parents are wrestlers. Yeah. So. And Daniel Bryan, he's only on the road one day a week, so yeah. he's still going to be home with them, so congrats to them. <laughs> Uh, anyways, is he uh, going to be saying yes or no? When it, is the first word going to be yes or no? 
<laughs> Can you imagine? They they have to have that tape. It's going to be tape. We know it. Uh, we got some interesting comments from Stephen McMahon on a potential UK pay per view event. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, she puts, "Yes, I know. I keep wondering that myself. I think they are because Darby always listens to our to the fan base." And UK fans are pretty loud, pretty rowdy in a great way. And you know, we are constantly evaluating that. Personally, I would love to see it. And I know it would be incredible. So what time would that be for us if they did it a live paper? I'm going to Google it right here on the air. So let's say uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. No, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Ontario time to United Kingdom. I'm sure if I pull up on Google, it's going to come up. It's tw- <laughs> okay, 7 p.m. our time is 12 a.m. their time. So at midnight. They'd have to do a live pay-per-view at midnight. Oh, my God. Hang on. Let me, let me put 5. No. Uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Man, you know what? I'm okay with yeah, that. Yeah, okay. 2 p.m. in the afternoon, our time, would be 7 p.m. for them. I'm okay with having one pay-per-view start at 2 o'clock in the afternoon for us. I mean, on a Sunday. It's on a Sunday. It's not a work day. And it's just for them. They deserve it. Like, they have to watch Raw at midnight every week. <laughs> oh, yeah, Michael Chow. Darby is always listening to our fan base. It's definitely man. Really? Really? In a way, Michael Chow is right. <laughs> but, like, if, if we can sacrifice for one week, they have to do it for the entire year. So, like, I yeah. feel for those those fans over there. Yeah. So I'm okay with having a pay-per-view start at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Even if we miss it, whatever. It's for them. I don't care. Yeah. More news. Shinsuke Nakamura's next food possibly revealed. Oh. Uh, the RoboBank Arena in Bakersfield, California released uh, the card. <laughs> RoboBank. The Robo Charlotte Arena? <laughs> uh, for June 26th. And it has Owens facing Nakamura for the U.S. title. So there are rumors coming out now that Owens and Nakamura for the U.S. Could you imagine that U.S. title feud? It's a rematch of their NXT title feud. That'd be insane. Um, Dale O'Brien also forgot to mention that uh, he plans on wrestling after his contract's done. I mean, he. I mean, he basically said that a year ago. He's not. WWE's never going to clear him. Just under the principle of they made him retire. They're never going to let him wrestle again. No, he won't wrestle in WWE. But no. guarantee he does the whole Cody oh, Rhodes yeah. thing. I bet you sees what Cody Rhodes is doing. He's like, oh, I want to do that. Right? Have all these profile matches outside WWE. So, do you think he just does like a one-off thing, or do you think he goes like full time back on the road and then isn't the SmackDown GM anymore? Because he has a commitment hmm. to that as well. Hmm. I don't know. Do you think it's just like a one-off match? I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, is Dan Ryan going to come out for a one-off match? I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> I, I'd say, I think he does the, Co- in my opinion, I think he does the Cody Rhodes thing. I think he has a couple of matches. I don't think he's going to have just one, maybe a couple. I'd say maybe him and Del Rio, your boy El Patron. If he's still roaming around the indies, they have a one-off. That would be a great match that we never saw in WWE. Yeah. There's a lot of guys on the indies that it would be a great match with Daniel Bryan. What about Okada or... That'd um, be sick. If he goes to New Japan? Or goes Kenny back. Omega. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, man. That's like a dream match. <laughs> Jesus. I can't wait. Uh, more news. Possible announcer or uh, commentator for the upcoming women's tournament. Funaki? Not other than Jim oh. Ross. <laughs> Jim Ross, and the uh, tapings will be starting to taped uh, July 13th and 14th for y'all wanting in it, uh, no more information about the WWE Women's Tournament. You know what? Why, if it's not the Women's Tournament, why do they not have a woman's commentator? Do they, are there women's commentators out there? No, but why not start? Yeah. Well, they don't have a women's commentator. Why not start with one? Even, like, I don't know, can Lita commentate a women's match? She does Maybe, the Maybe, yeah. Already. She could probably do... And Renee Young. Renee, Renee Young and Lita? Not really a... Color person. It's it's the thing is is they have to know what's going on in the ring enough, right? Maybe yeah. Lita would be good because she's been in the ring, so I don't know. Jim Ross and Lita. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I found an article right now. I don't know if I should read it. John Cena says he's looking forward to facing Roman Reigns. You know what, Vince? That match will go on for days. There won't ever be a finish in that match. Yeah, no one will lose. I'm just saying, you need to make that. The, <laughs> this Roman Reigns and Lesnar match you plan for next year's WrestleMania, the one we're going to, please replace it with John Cena. <laughs> is John Cena passing the torch on to Roman as the new barrier of all talent? No. <laughs> is oh, that what it's going to be? 
Oh, Michael Schultz Alita commentated Sunday Night Heat, the WWE version, during her broken neck injury. And I remember Ivory was a commentator on Sunday Night oh, Heat. Oh, uh, Ivory, that's right, that's right. Oh, I got some more news here. You forgot you mentioned this to me today. Our truth is to host his own WWE Network show soon. Yes, our truth. <laughs> According to PW Insider, our truth is all set for his own show on the WWE Network. The series might end up hitting the network in early fall. There he has secretly filmed, secretly filmed the pilot episode for the new show already. The show is to be some kind of game show, which will make the first of its kind on the network. WB is looking to make the network more of a big deal. Shows like these might end up helping its uh, garner more subscribers and more viewers. Also, r is one of the most entertaining superstars on the roster, apparently. Hence, choosing him to be the host of the show. That's going to be hilarious. He's got a good yeah. personality. He's funny. Come yeah, on. he is. Yeah. And what, do you, what do you want to call it? What's up? Yeah. Oh, Michael, who would get booed most in the John Cena and Roman Reigns match? Uh, I think Cena would be the baby face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think people are starting to come around on Cena. He's not getting as booed as much anymore. Yeah. Like, they're still booing him, but... And they're still doing the whole John Cena sucks things, but that's like Kurt Angle. That's part of his song now. It's just never going to go away. Yeah. Even when they're cheering. It's great, him. though. People almost do it out of respect, too. Yeah. It's like the Kurt Angle. Yeah, like you said, it's the Kurt Angle thing. Uh, it's another news I read today. I don't know. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to touch base on it. Uh, Ricardo Rodriguez retires from wrestling. Um, I, they gave like a Brock Lesnar update. He's supposed to return at a live event before he actually comes back to Raw. Sure. I've got a piece of news. Oh, you got a piece of news. Yeah. Uh, since we, we love uh, collecting action figures, WWE action figures, they had their top 10 best sellers this week list. Oh. And we're going to go from 10 to 1 here. So this is uh, I'm reading this off because you'll never guess who would number 1, okay? Oh, man. From 10, Shane O'Max Elite. Okay. Number 9, Sasha Banks and Charlotte Flair Battle Pack. 8, Demon Finn Balor SummerSlam 27 Elite figure. 7, Baron Corbin Elite. 6, Alexa Bliss regular figure. Best figure on the market. Okay. AJ Styles regular figure, which I also have. Uh, the Balor Club Finn Balor Ringside ex- Elite exclusive figure. Number three, Shinsuke Nakamura Defining Moments. Number two, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson Battle Pack. Oh. And the number one oh, best selling figure for the week. Can you guess what it is? For the week? <sighs> Did you say Dean Ambrose already? Nope. Dean Ambrose? Nia Jax! What? Is the best selling action figure. How? On Ringside Collectibles. How? There's no way. I swear to God, they stop it. it. I guess people are not like most girls, you know. Yeah, I don't know. she's not like most figures. She's probably her figure's probably <laughs> huge. Can you imagine yeah, how yeah, big? Yeah, she's not is? like most action figures. It's gonna be like comparable to like Andre the Giant's figure. Oh my God, Michael Chow. I was gonna say Ellsworth, Michael Chow, but I, Ellsworth I, does not have one yet. But we yeah. have to. We have to, to start. <laughs> we have to start a movement to get Ellsworth a figurine. Um. Last two bit of news, I'll just touch base over to. Uh, apparently, WWE is extremely high on Aleister Black. They they see a lot more in him, and I'm I'm liking that. Aleister Black is a really cool wrestler, and I hope they take him out of this rumored two hundred five live division and they push him somewhere else. Well, he was on main event. Match. He was on main yeah. event in a dark match. So uh, it looks like they it, the rumors are true, and they're really high on him. And I'm I'm high on Aleister Black too. He's, he's uh, an exceptional piece of talent. Tommy End. Tommy End. <laughs> And apparently Roman Reigns is to feud with The Miz after Backlash. And he's supposed to be the one to take away the IC title away from Miz. R.I.P. Miz. I feel so bad for him. <laughs> that, I mean, it's a new feud, but I just don't like it. Cause I can already see them burying Miz from it. Yeah, they're going to bury me. There's no way Miz beats Roman Reigns for the IC title. There is no way in hell you can t- you cannot sit there and tell me if someone came but get behind Miz and tell him or tell me that Miz is going to beat Roman Reigns. There's no way, no way in hell. So does that mean that Miz is going to beat? Yeah, hashtag Ambrose? save the Miz, Michael Chow. Oh my God, save the Miz. Yeah, if that's the current rumors, then I mean Miz is one of the best parts of WWE television. Period. Overall, right now, yeah, and they're just going to completely bury him to Reigns. I mean, yeah. All right, that that's it for the news. I got none left, and we've actually gone an hour and a half. Yeah, we've touched base on a lot of stuff. I'm sorry for the review being so short, but that's what it deserved this week. That's our honest opinion. Yep, we We're glad it. you guys tuned in the show, and that is going to wrap it up. 
for week number six of the Lowdown Show right here on Noho's Bard Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw. She's a nice smackdown from the past week, even if it's shit like this week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called List of Ten, which will make its return next week. Hopefully, it's not too bad. And there are the headlines we just spent 45 minutes talking about where we talk about any important news and rumors going on in the WWE. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. Or if you like joining on the chat and talk to us during the show, it is available on all Apple and Android devices, the app Spreaker itself. So go download it. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio by searching The Lowdown Show. So go check us out. Give us a five-star rating. And, where, and listen to us wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. Um, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Bar WP and join in on the conversation. Have your thoughts and questions read right here on the show, like we did earlier. And we we will always read them out, guys, no matter who it is. Uh, we are always available on Facebook and Instagram as well by searching No Holds Bar WP. So all the links will be on YouTube in the description below. So go follow us and check us out on there. Um, did you have to say anything there? Uh, backlash <laughs> and uh, NXT predictions coming next week. Yeah, coming next week. So stay tuned for those. And other than that, I'm your host, self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Every week, I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host, the Isabella's full boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Yep. We are always here, reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. What you gonna do about it? Is that what you got?